Last time on Races to Places, if you recall, we were at the Hammersmith 400. Mozambique, South Africa, lots of sand. <laughs> <laughs> so today, just out for a, a ride with some uh, fellow Dakar riders. So today is going to be one cool day for Lyndon and Basil. They're going to hit the sandy trails and ride with none other than Joey Evans and his friends. Half in front of me, just waiting to let me know where to go. And he puts the hammer down on the 450 rally, and there's me with my 730 and luggage and tank bag with cameras. <laughs> so it's a bit, a bit rough on the old big girl today, Basil, isn't it? When you said it's going to be sandy today, I thought that would mean relaxing on the beach with a few cocktails. Races to places today. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I like that. My bike's been flawless. Good old KTM. So it's really been a good day for me. <laughs> How you doing, Basil and Lyndon? Where, where, where's the sound? We're just uh, having a little break here in the lovely, uh, lovely weather up here on this hillside. <laughs> Just thought we'd take a moment to repair a puncture. <laughs> Some really awesome scenery just cruising along this nice gravel road. I just made this route up myself. I just put the uh, look at the view. I just set the uh, GPS in a straight line to roughly where I want to be, which is Lesotho from the east coast and um, just put all the shortest distance in so that it didn't reroute me onto highways and found all these amazing little gravel roads look at the views Woo! for those of you who don't know Jerry Evans story he is a South African guy who started riding bikes aged 26 Moving from motocross to enduro, where on the 13th of October 2007, riding the Heidenberg Hair Scramble, he suffered a terrible accident, paralysing him from below the chest. Undergoing an operation would give him a 10% chance of walking again, but that wasn't enough for Joey. So with sheer hard work and determination, he not only rode his bike again, but competed in the world's toughest bike race, the Dakar. What an inspirational guy. For the next few days, I'm gonna be riding with my good friend, Joey Evans. And I could uh, tell a few stories about Joey, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna give him 60 seconds to <laughs> tell us who he is uh, and tell us his story briefly. Awesome. Uh, well, my name's Joey Evans uh, from South Africa, and I've always had a dream to race the Dakar. Yeah, but that dream was crushed back in 2007 when I broke my back and crushed my spinal cord and was paralyzed. But I was fortunate enough that I had my back fused and learned to walk again and learned to ride again. And it was a 10 year goal to, to still race the Dakar. And so in 2017, I got to line up at the start of the Dakar rally um, along with Lyndon to, uh, to go race it in South America. 
and it was a fantastic race, lots of ups and downs, but probably the worst was on the second last day when I had my bike ridden over by a car. That's and it this looked, bike, uh, right? That's right, this one right here. And it looked like it was all over, you know, petrol tanks gone, foot pegs gone, exhaust flattened, subframe bent and all sorts. But uh, and I was lying stone last at the time, which I'm often in that position. <laughs> but uh, I managed to find another bike in the middle of the desert, strip all the spares off it, fix my bike, rode through the night and finished the Dakar rally. So it was great to uh, cross yeah. the finish line and celebrate with Linda. But it's a, it's a proper story and uh, you've wrote a book about it, right? That's it, yeah. I, when I got back, I wrote the book about it and now I do talks uh, yeah. all over the place on, uh, on that journey. Yeah, so Joey Evans uh, from Para to Dakar is what his book's called. The journey to the Dakar start line would be an incredible achievement in itself, but 9,000 kilometers across South America would test Joey's resolve and determination beyond what could ever have been imagined. It shows you you don't quit, ever. and uh, he's going to be riding with me for a few days on races to places Cheers, on his rally bike that looks a little bit better yeah. than uh, it did on the Dakar rally but it's a little straighter now <laughs> <laughs> Others hold their hand out for money. At the end of the day, you're more likely to give something to those that wave. <laughs> yeah, I know. I think as soon as we're off the altitude, it's going to get a lot better. Uh, Joey, what's going on, man? <laughs> Where are you going? <laughs> Some of us have to go to work, Lyndon. Not all of us just travel around the world taking photos and call that a job. So we got to go do some work and so I've got to ride out here on a day that's going to drop to <laughs> minus eight which I'm very excited about so I here we go. Just, I think you're just escaping because you don't want to ride in the snow with us. Uh, where are you riding today Lyndon? <laughs> uh, today is the day off mate. <laughs> I've got to sort some videos out. Oh, that's a little convenient in the snow today. Enjoy your hibernation. <laughs> Okay, so here we are in Lesotho and I never anticipated in my journey through Africa being stood in a ski resort that was founded by a fellow Dakar competitor. Uh, this is Vessel Bossman, he's been a Dakar competitor three times. He's also just like races to places, he's ridden to the start of a rally so he rode from the south of Africa up to Egypt for the Farans rally and then raced the rally. Then shipped his bike across to Europe and paid his deposit and went to the Dakar rally and Vessel, I'm not going to say any more, but just uh, tell us a little bit about how Afri Afriski came about and a little bit about yourself, please. You know, I grew up on a farm that the coldest was 11 degrees, yeah. but then I import cars from Swaziland and somehow they sent it to, Swa uh, to the Sutu. By mistake, yeah? By mistake. And we, <laughs> I went come and look for the cars it snowed that day yeah. and I was in Japan at the Winter Olympic Games and then I went to another ski resort that was let's say 1% of it and I said there must be some places better yeah. so I come up to the mountains at a mi minimum maximum temperature and up there I measured that night was minus 7 I said this is a perfect, perfect. place okay this is a short story yeah. but um, a few years later um, we graft and now there's a lot of people that help, but we have to know. And, and tonight you will uh, get snow. <laughs> We're going to get some snow in Africa tonight, so hopefully we'll get that in the videos as well. But you, Starvi Tomil site, you had 5,000 Rand when you started this project. <laughs> yes, um, um, which is 5,000 Rand is what? 500 euro. Let's say in that state it was about 500, 500 euro. euros, and there was nothing here. Nothing. Like Welcome to Africa. Just thought I'd share with you the weather here tonight. It's glorious. I think we might go skiing tomorrow at this rate. Check it out. This puzzle bike. 
Hey, he's hanging out here, trying to stay warm. Sheesh. Let's just say I opted not to stay in the tent tonight. <laughs> This morning got up to a lovely white setting uh, never expected to see snow here in Africa uh, but here in Lesotho at 3,000 meters it can happen anytime by surprise and naturally this time last year it was also snowing and uh, it's really beautiful it's great to see it this way unfortunately after the snow the temperatures plummeted to minus nine which means under the snow it's frozen where water's been running on roads and it's really quite dangerous to ride. Now normally if I would ride in conditions like this if I had to get somewhere but when there's no rush to get anywhere it seems pretty pointless so I don't want to risk an injury. I'm going to spend the day here at Afriski, do some admin on the computer and just enjoy the beautiful scenery around. Snow in Africa! This is looking better. Dropping down from the mountains and into the sunshine. Uh, Mackin. Cheers. I'm out of water now, but I know it's only a couple of kilometres, so I can get to the nearest town and get topped up. That's the reason, one of the reasons why I turned around. I knew I didn't have enough water and it was 30 kilometres of that, and uh, it's just not worth it, and uh, the risk of injury and everything. So I just took it up, turned around and go back. There's always another day tomorrow. So we're just in Maseru, which is the capital of Lesotho. Um, don't normally come through the capital cities, but I just took a detour because I was told it's not that busy, which it's not. It's quite pleasant. And also there's some nice stone buildings you see there. Big cathedral built out of sandstone. This looks like a lovely place to stay for the evening. Mountains, clouds, sun and the sky. Beautiful. Next time on Races to Places, it's preparation for the Kalahari Rally. Hi everyone, I just want to say a massive thank you to you all for watching my media and for all the great comments that I receive every single day, please keep them coming. I'm just going to share with you my Patreon page. Patreon is a membership based platform that gives creators like me the opportunity to continue cre to create the media that you love to watch. For just a few dollars a month, I can give you priority viewing, I can give you special features, 
informative posts about the things that you want to know. It creates a platform for interaction between you, the viewer, and me, the creator. Now, a few dollars a month might not seem like a lot to you, but for me, collectively, it makes a huge difference. So please check out the link at the bottom of the page, and I appreciate any contribution you can make to make my job sustainable. In return for that, I promise to keep creating great media that you love, dreaming up new projects, filming it and sharing it with you all. Thanks.